Hi everybody, Steve here at Cypress Lawn Memorial Park in Colma, California. Colma is just 10-15 minutes south of downtown San Francisco. And I'm here today to share a very sad story with you about a young girl who was murdered way back in 1895. She was only 21 years old and her story is an especially sad one because of the way she was buried. And that's why I'm here at this cemetery today to share this story with you. On April 12, 1895, 21-year-old Minnie Williams became the second victim of a rapist and killer who would later be called Demon of the Belfry. Theo Durant, who later became known as the Demon of the Belfry, was 26 years old and worked in downtown San Francisco at the Emanuel Baptist Church. He was the assistant superintendent of the Sunday school. And it was just Minnie's bad luck to be a young, pretty member of that church. Presumably because she was familiar with or knew Theo, he was able to lure Minnie into a private area of the church. And when no one was around, he sexually assaulted her and then murdered her. And it wasn't just your typical run-of-the-mill murder. It was pretty graphic, according to one of the sources I read, said that after raping and stabbing her, he stuffed her undergarments down her throat until she choked to death. He then dumped her naked body into a utility closet within the church bell tower. Apparently, he then cleaned himself up and walked down the hall to attend the church social. Who does something like that? Well, I guess that's why they called him the demon. The nickname was very fitting. His first victim was Blanche Lamont, and apparently he murdered her in a similar way. And she was either 21 years old or 22 years old. Back then, I don't think they kept records as well as they do today. Well, even now, they don't keep records that well at at times, as we've discovered on this channel, on headstones and on memorial pages and obituaries. The good news is Theo was convicted for both murders, and he was actually hanged at San Quentin Prison up here in the Bay Area on January 7th, 1878. So that was pretty quick justice compared to the justice that is given out these days. He was cremated and his ashes were given to his parents and the whereabouts of his ashes or anyone's guess. I was interested in finding out the final resting place of the two victims. Blanche was buried at Mountain View Cemetery in Montana And Minnie was originally buried in downtown San Francisco at Laurel Hill Cemetery. Sadly, the city of San Francisco closed that cemetery and forced the evacuation of all the bodies. And they were all dug up and reinterred right here at Cypress Lawn in Colma, California. Now, Colma is about, as I mentioned, is about about 15 minutes south of downtown San Francisco. The problem is... There were approximately 35,000 people buried in that cemetery. Some of them very notable, pioneers of the city, very famous people. And I guess it wasn't possible to identify them all. So all of those bodies, a few of them were identified by their families and they were buried in other cemeteries. But the majority of the 35,000 were brought here to this cemetery here in Colma and they're all buried in a mass grave, a mass unmarked grave. There is a memorial, a very nice memorial, a very large, nice memorial to this mass grave, honoring the dead of Laurel Hill Cemetery that were moved here. One of those 35,000 grave sites belonged to Minnie Williams. So not only was she brutally murdered, but now she's laid to rest in an unmarked grave. It's very windy, but I'm going to try to read you a little bit of this memorial plaque. It's very long, but it says Laurel Hill Memorial to commemorate the California pioneers. And it talks about the early pioneers who settled and created San Francisco. But the land became very valuable after a while. And in 1902, by order of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors, Laurel Hill was closed to further burials. So no more burials after uh, 1902. And then it says formal attempts to force abandonment of the cemetery came in 1913 and again in 1924. Both attempts have failed. 
In April 1937, the San Francisco Board of Supervisors, for the third time, passed an ordinance demanding evacuation of Laurel Hill so its land could be converted to housing and street development. So in 1937, it finally passed after a 35-year struggle to save the last home of the pioneers was ended. And then it says removal from Laurel Hill began February 26, 1940. Some remains were placed by descendants in other cemeteries. Most of them were brought here to Cypress Lawn, and now 35,000 of San Francisco's pioneer dead lie in underground vaults a few paces north of this tablet. So that would be this section right here. Right behind this obelisk. So Laurel Hill Cemetery is no longer there in downtown San Francisco. And this is where all of the remains were moved, or the majority of the remains were moved. And this plaque was dedicated in 1953. So it's nice that they've created this plaque and this memorial to honor all of the notable people and all of the others who were laid to rest at that San Francisco cemetery that's no longer there. Time and history isn't always kind to the victims of serial killers and spree killers and other murderers and criminals. So that's why I wanted to come here today, just to share Minnie's story. I'm guessing that a lot of you probably haven't heard of Minnie. I hadn't heard of her until I was planning this road trip up here to Colma. When I discovered her story, I thought, well, she's definitely someone that deserves to be remembered, someone that I would like to, to know a little bit more about, and someone that I would like to share on this channel with all of you. I know you like to remember the people who are sometimes forgotten over time. This week, I want to thank my newest Patreon supporter, Brenda. Thank you, Brenda, for your kind donation to my channel. It's very appreciated and helps make future trips like this possible. I also want to give a shout out and a very big thank you to all of my new subscribers. Thank you for taking the time to subscribe. That means a lot and helps a lot too. Until our next trip to the cemetery together, thanks for sharing the memories, everybody.